Well, NBC's official narrative on the Harvey Weinstein abuse story and why they covered it up continues to crumble tonight. Already one of their very own anchors, Megyn Kelly, rebutted their claim that nobody is willing to go on the record and accuse Weinstein. That turned out to be a lie. Rose McGowan was on the record accusing Weinstein, and they killed the story anyway. Now another person, a former Weinstein company executive, says that NBC dishonestly represented her allegations against Weinstein as, quote, personal suspicions, when in fact she'd gone on camera and made specific allegations of abuse that she personally witnessed. So at this point, there's really no reason to trust NBC. We're not saying that out of competitive animus, but based on the facts. So far, they haven't even finished investigating Joy Reid's hacked blog, the one the FBI was supposedly investigating, or explained why they leaked the Access Hollywood tape to the Washington Post. They've lied about that for almost two years. Maybe it's time for NBC to hire an outside investigator, say an independent, reputable law firm, to come in and launch an unbiased review and identify who played what role in protecting Harvey Weinstein. We know what happened. It would be useful for the rest of us to know who did it and why. Tammy Bruce is a radio show host and president of Independent Women's Voice, and she joins us tonight. Tammy, right before air, I got a call uh, letting me know that NBC, stung by our investigation into their lying and the cover-up, is now doing a hit piece on me personally, mm -hmm. calling me, of course, a racist. Oh, sure. On the basis of no evidence. But it's another indication that they are caught red-handed. Wouldn't it be more useful, since they're a news organization, just to fess up and say, look, we were being threatened by Harvey Weinstein or whatever, we did this, we're sorry, rather than trying to extend what is so clearly a lie? Well, you know, but they seem to be taking a page out of Weinstein's book. Part of what we saw him do was issue threats against individuals who yes. either were saying they were going to cover him or they had questions, and then those individuals would retreat. So this seems to be something that, for some reason, uh, the NBC, if they're doing this, uh, is applying. It's something Weinstein uh, would do. But they have bigger problems. Ronan Farrow's got a book coming out called Catch and Kill, that he, where he describes exactly what happened and how that story was killed at NBC. So their their problems are, are very, very big, uh, and you're simply discussing them, which is important. But what we also know is, when it comes to even that 11-page tome that Andy Lack put out uh, about defending what it is they did, he actually stated that, that for the women that came forward, because they said that they had no one to go on camera, as you noted, they actually, uh, they actually did have someone going uh, on the record, of course. But journalistic ethics actually has kept uh, reporters from revealing the names of sexual uh, assault victims, but certainly never expects them to go on camera. And in his rebuttal pages, he actually mocks the—it sounds like he's mocking uh, these uh, uh, victims of Harvey Weinstein by saying, would these brave women that talked to Ronan for, this, for the print story, would they have gone in front of a camera and the lights? Well, since when and why would they so destroy a level of journalistic ethics that everyone applies? Look, there's some debate about whether or not you should uh, name a sexual assault victim. But separately right. from that, uh, with all uh, things being equal, why would he then have it be a standard that these victims would well, have exactly, to go on exactly. camera personally? And yet, we already had not just Rose McGowan, but that model who was taped and did a sting for the NYPD. You're, she you're was totally also right. known. So you have a whole coverage here of, uh, of I think, a problem that they're going to have to face very soon, especially with that and book coming out. Such a smart point. It's the opposite standard that they normally apply. It is indeed. Very, very smart. Tammy, thank you. Thank you. Well, Nike assigned Colin Kaepernick to an ad campaign. Some people are deeply unimpressed by that. The ensuing fracas threatens to hurt Nike. We are speaking to El Presidente, Dave Portnoy.